Yeah, recording started a little. <laughs> Wait. Yeah. You have the support and strength of Vairagya. Uh, because recording started a little late. Uh, in Radha Dasyam last week, I gave the file with this story so you can read there. Therefore, so you have the support and strength of Vairagya or renunciation. Therefore, always remain free and fearless. Live on Madhukari or whatever you get in alms. First of all, go to the old temple of Govinda Dev. What you have to do next? you will come to know at the appropriate time. At appropriate time, you will meet me, your bandhu. On receiving the letter, Ramdas started for Vrindavana by the first train. In the train, he met an old woman who took him to the old temple of Govindadev. On the right side of the temple is a room resemb resembling the temple. She entered that room and said, Come, this is my home. As soon as he entered the room, he saw that the old lady had disappeared, and on the altar in the room, Set Goddess Yogamaya in the form of a beautiful Murti. <laughs> wow. He cried out, Ma, Ma, and he fell unconscious. Wow. What experience. When he regained consciousness, the Mahatma of the temple asked him to stay in a room of the temple. He thought that that was also due to the mercy of Yoga Maya. Wow, so beautiful. The next day in the morning, Ramdas went for a bath in Yamuna. By chance, he met Vrajabala and Premananda Bharati. Premananda Bharati embraced him and kissed him and said, Kaneya has granted my prayer. He has set you free and brought you to the place of his Lila. Now he will play with you and will be happy to hear your kirtanas. So beautiful. Wow. What welcoming committee to come to Vrindavana. Wow. And we can see how Yoga Maya here is also important. As one time before, we were also, I think, reading, or actually I was listening somewhere, how Madurga also can help us. Because in Yoga Maya, you know, can help us to come in real Vrindavan. So we can see here how Yoga Maya brought him directly to the temple. And when he understood that this was Yoga Maya, so much emotion came to him that he was crying out and then fell unconscious. Wow. So, it's the time. Okay, we still have time. One day, Ramdas lay down under a Kadamba tree in Kalidah with his head supported by a root of the tree as pillow and fell asleep, just as a child would fall asleep in the lap of his mother 
while sucking at her breast. In a dream, at the end of the night, he saw a goddess whose body was shedding light like a thousand moons, uttering a mantra in his ear. In the morning, he went to the kuti of Rajabala and told him all about the dream. Rajabala was excited. He embraced Randas and said, Yoga Maya, Yoga Maya's mercy. By the mercy of Yoga Maya, you got the Mantra Raj in a dream. Later, you will get it from a Mahapurusha. Jagat Bandhu did not give Mantra to you. He does not give Mantra to anyone. Do the japa of this mantra. You will realize the desired end. Ramdas shivered to hear this. He was shivering. A few drops of tears trickled down his eyes. Wow, he got mantra. Great. Ramdas Babaji had already received the blessings of all the great Mahatmas of his time. He now received the blessings of Yoga Man. After this, what remained? What remained was the fulfillment of the blessings. It was not long before the fulfillment came. So one, one thing is great, you know, that we always pray that we get blessings of everyone, every Mahatma, every, everyone, Yoga Maya, that we get the blessings. This is so much important. One day, while going about in different places in Vraja, for the darshana of the spots connected with the lila of uh, Shri Krishna, he reached, of course, where? Radhakund. <laughs> he was sitting at the bridge over the confluence of Radhakund and Shyamakund when he saw two young gopis standing on the bank of Radhakunda and talking to each other, with each other. The beauty of their faces, beaming with transcendental light, stole his heart. As he looked at them, the conceit of his being a male was, was transformed into the conceit of a manjari. Ah, a sake in the service of Radha. <laughs> Suddenly, they disappeared. Slowly, just a second. <laughs> Difficult to read. <clears throat> uh, slowly, the sun was set and night approached. When it became dark, the same gopis came laughing. They... <clears throat> They asked him to accompany them. Like one spellbound and possessed by a transcendental bhava, Ramdas Babaji followed them in his manjari form. After going some distance, he saw a beautifully decorated swing hanging from the branch of a banyan tree on which were set, seated Radha and Krishna. And the same gopis were pushing the swing backward and forward while he was enjoying the transcendental beauty of the twin divinities and singing. Suddenly, 
the whole scene disappeared. But his Radha Dasi or Manjari Bhava remained, which became permanent. Wow. So beautiful. so beautiful. So we want to also that our Manjari Bhava or your Bhava comes and like that remains permanent. Wow. So beautiful. So beautiful. So after some time, Bandhu came to Vrindavana and took Ramdas with him to Radhakund. They stayed together in Radhakund for a month and enjoyed Kirtana, Smarana, and Darshana in Smarana of different kinds of Lila of Radha Krishna. They returned to Vrindavana a day before Rasa Purni. One day, they were returning after a bath in Yamuna. When a lady offered to Ramdas rich prashad of different kinds in good quantity. After the lady had gone, Bandhu put a small particle of the prashad in his mouth and a small particle in the mouth of Ramdas and said to him, Go, after making obeisance to Yamuna and to Prashad, throw the Prashad into the river. Ramdas obeyed, but he did not understand why Bandhu asked him to throw away Prashad into the river. Bandhu said, Look, Shri Murti and Prashad are non different. <clears throat> Shri Murti remains unmanifest. It manifests itself only to a pure devotee, gives darshana to him, and talks to him. Similarly, Prashad does not manifest itself to everyone. It manifests itself only in the house of a devotee. Therefore, one should take prashad only at the house of a devotee. Interestingly, saying next sentence, prashad given by a non-devotee should be regarded as maya in the form of prashad. Interesting. After a few days, Bandhu decided to return to Bengal, leaving Ramdas in Vrindavan. When he told Ramdas about it, he saw that his eyes had become wet. His heart was already sore because the person for the sake of, of whose company he had renounced the world had sent him away to live alone in Vrindavana. He had expected that Bandhu would not further deprive him of his company. Bandhu held both of his hands and said gravely, Rama, live in Vrindavana. You will be blessed. Rama said in choked voice, very well, and a few drops of tears trickled down his eyes. After Bandhu had gone, Ramdas began to live in Patanakunj, near the temple of Radharam. He lived with intense vairagya and passed all his time in Japa, Lila Smarana, and in the company of the Sadhus. 
For Prashad, he had to go to Raghunandana uh, Goswami's house. Raghunandana Goswami had asked him in the presence of Jagat Bandhu to take Prashad from his house every day. Bandhu had not objected to this out of respect for, for, for Raghunandana Goswami. But he had already asked Ramdas not to accept Shtula Viksha, meaning whole meal, from anyone. So it was difficult upon Ramdas to obey both Bandhu and Raghunandana Goswami. Therefore, he brought Prashad from Raghunandana Goswami and gave it to an old Vrajabasi lady, from whom he took two rotis made of bajar or jwara, this, I don't know, what is this? <laughs> uh, the poor lady felt happy to receive from Ramdas the rich fare consisting of kir, puri, and sandesh, etc., But Ramdas Baba felt happier to get from her the madukari or the alms of the roti made of coarse or grinded grains. Yeah? Some time passed like this. Ramdas was now 17 years old. An important change was to take place in his life. As a prelude to it, he received a 10 rupee money order from Bandhu. On the coupon of the money order was written, Come to Kolkata from Hagli by steamer, steamer boat. Stay with Patika Majumada of Umaratuli. So this, your bandus we wrote to him. So when Ramdas Baba reached the house of Fatika Babu, Bandu was there. After some time came Sri Atul Champati, a Mahatma looking like an avadut, like a nonsense, like avad, like almost like crazy person. He took him to a room and said, you stay here. Bandhu will not meet anyone today. Baba was stunned to hear this. He had come to Bandhu his very life and soul with a passionate desire to meet him after such a long time. He was expecting that Bandhu almost must be restless to, to meet him and would clasp him with his arms as soon as he, as he saw him. He had never imagined, even in a dream, that he would cold shoulder him like that. Why at all did he call him from Vrindavana, he thought. After calling, why was he so indifferent to him? There must be some important and secret reason for this. What that reason could be, he tried, to hard, so he tried hard to guess, but could not. A day before Ramdas came, Bandhu had told his companions, I'm going to get a plant of Harinama from Vrindavana. The, the plant of Harinama. Interesting. Uh, maybe somebody knows which is this plant. Yeah. The plant is from a good seed. Sometimes ago, I had left it there to grow in the climate of Vrindavana. 
it has now become all proof. Laden heavily with fruits, it is about to come here soon. Oh, the plant of Harinama, Ramdas. Our Ramdas is the plant of Harinama. <laughs> so this is not the actual plant, but a person. <laughs> He apprehended that the parrots of Rindavana might eat up its fruits and the thousands of hungry people of the world might remain hungry without them. He was anxious to leave Ramdas in the world as a moving kalpavriksha or desired tree, to move about freely for the benefit of all. But the task was not so easy. The main obstacle in it was the love of love of Ramdas for him and his earnest desire to live with him. It was to remove this obstacle that he had planned a device of which this was the beginning. Even more important than this, there was another reason why Banda wanted to keep Ramdas apart. All the devotees of Bandu regarded him as Bhagavan, as God. Ramdas alone regarded him as his Dada or elder brother. The relationship he had established with him was the relationship of pure love simple, unaffected, natural, and unrestrained love. There was no scope in it for fear, formality, and regard for any kind of Aishwarya or position that compels an attitude of worship, just as there was no scope for such things in the attitude of the gopis towards Krishna. The gopis refused to recognize Krishna as Bhagavan, even though they saw infinite Aishwarya in him. It was not possible for Bandhu to keep together the devotees having contrary attitude towards him. Ramdas had a delayed meeting with Bandhu. But a smile from Bandhu made him forget everything. They started talking of Leela and performing Kirtan as usual. As desired by Bandhu, Ramdas performed Nagar Kirtan during the day and spent the nights in talking about the Leela of Radha Krishna with Bandhu and performing Leela, Leela Kirtana with him. So, Lila Kirtana meaning Kirtana relating to some particular Lila of Radha Krishna. Okay, I think maybe because we, we don't know what will happen after, the story is still long. So, we should stop here. And then next week, we will just remember a little what was happened until now and then we will continue with the story so in this story i mean one part which really really touched me was this part when he came to Vrindavana and, and then when he came to radha kund actually we all desire this we all desire this that our true connection our true nature our true form, spiritual form, is realized and that we can always stay in that. That our bhava, as a manjari bhava, remains and becomes permanent. This is our desire, because what else? Is important for us. You know, we can do many things here, read, talk a lot of things, 
But, but the main thing is that our bhava develops fully in our heart and permanently stays there. Whatever. We, it can be Manjari Baba, it can be some other Baba. But your Baba, we should pray. We should pray actually for blessings of everyone. And, and we can see in this example how he got blessings of all the Mahatmas. And also he got the blessings of Yoga Maya. And in the end, when he came to Radha Kund, there he met their Ishtadev, his Ishtadev. You know, Radha and Krishna swinging. So, this is so beautiful. So thank you all for, all for, for listening. And now we'll start the Italian Sangha. And from my heart, I wish you the hap happiest new year and that in this new year, you really get the blessings of Radhika to fully go into your Baba. So, Radhika.